we we used to operate in concert. We had a club of five. Jerry was the the leader, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the members of the club, and I was very happy so to be. The the, the biggest show naturally, properly went to Jerry and Sylvia. That because it was their franchise. I mean, that's right and proper. And then uh, probably next in ranking would be. Um, not probably, certainly next in ranking would be John, uh, John Reed, and Reg Hill. And then, because I was the latest, last to join the group, uh, there was Keith Shackleton. Uh, but I, I had no problem with that, because uh, unto Caesar that which is due to Caesar. And, um, that's right and proper. And if we'd kept that going, it's still around today. Nobody came to have so well, so I think that's a myth. So. Nobody was uh, short of a penny or two. Um, Somebody, somebody squandered their birthright. Somebody made bad investments. Uh, but I think everybody associated with those times uh, has had a full and rich career. I mean, I had tough years from uh, the early seventies. I put it down in, to my own decision, so I uh, don't ask for any sympathy on that. Um, Jerry, uh, when you come off a high, it's very difficult to understand and accept that it's not continuing. So I think Jerry almost felt that there was a God-given right that he should go on at the same level he'd been enjoying. Uh, that was probably the time for taking a step back and taking stock and thinking, well, what, what has changed, what has happened, and so forth. So I think to some extent uh, you know, that was part of the problem. And of course, the early 70s, 74, was different. You know, we had inflation and oil prices went through the roof. The economy went uh, through the floor. Um, so it was a difficult time, and people, I think, were being very cautious. Uh, so I think you had to be fairly, uh, I use the word again, nimble, to find a niche for yourself. And I think Jerry should have found a new niche for himself, which uh, I know he made, he had a, a number of efforts, and he made some, he made uh, Duffel Doppelganger, I think, in those days which uh, lovely concept uh, didn't uh, probably earn its corn at the box office. Um, so uh, between, from 70 to 75, I used to see Jerry socially. It was in 75 that we got together again. And I say, I found uh, the Century 21 that had lapsed as a name and we picked it up again and ran with it. Lou Grade had it, so but when his empire went into 72, everything fell to the ground. So we were surprised to find the name was still there, and we we started. Jay was on the board, very much passive, because he was involved in Space 1999, I think, at the time, which was probably part of his resurgence. And the first ep the first series of Space 1999, I thought was pointing in the right direction. Then they brought some American influence on board. Fred, I can't think of his name now, producer, co-producer, um, and it didn't. It didn't develop its full potential, and therefore I think what might have happened with Space 1999 um, didn't happen. I mean, one of the things I did, I got hold of, um, I just heard a buzz that the, a book in the States called The Making of Star Trek had sold four million copies, which is not a copy, is it? So I thought The Making of Space 1999. So I got hold of a guy called Tim Heald the rights for the Telegraph and the uh, Radio Times. We got him down at the studio, and a splendid lunch and a chat, and we got him to write a uh, synopsis for a book called The Making of Space 1999. And I sold this on a one-page letter to a company in New York called Ballantines, who had published the, um, the Star Wars book, Star Trek book, sorry, Star Trek book. And they, we got a contract, and we got Tim to write the book. Uh, we got Red Shell to design the cover, and we went to press, and we didn't sell them four million copies. We sold forty thousand. And I would say that it was two for two reasons: the the design of the cover was wrong, the book cover was wrong, but the series didn't take off in the states. But it should have done. It it had the makings of uh, of another Star Trek. Uh, I'd, I'd I'd put the positive spin on it. If we'd if we'd kept together, I think we could have, we could have regrouped and formed a, an, in, I won't say an entity, an empire, because that sounds too grand. 
it could still be going today. And that was my dream. And that's the, the regret I have, is that that is not still there today, because it could have been. It should have been and could have been. And for reasons, for things that happened in the late 60s, uh, it, 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 it's not, isn't it? But uh, I'm a romantic at heart, you see. Thank you.